Hello and welcome to this video. Right here I'm just going to be showing what's in my bag for Hickory Golf Clubs. So here's the bag itself. It's actually from the 1950s, so not quite Hickory era, but it looks pretty good for that. Got that in a state sale. So here's my standard playset right here. It ranges from mid-iron all the way up to putter. Don't really have any actual Hickory woods over there. I've got a metal shafted one that I just kind of use the representation, but I still can't hit that one very well. So starting here, here's my putter. I did a separate video on this one, made by Columbia in Ohio. And I've restored all these clubs to varying degrees. You can see they all have whipping. I've reset all the heads, removed the rust as needed. I'll put a link to the video of this club. You can see the before and afters, more information about that. It's made in about 1930. It's all been restored. It's a suede leather grip. So I removed the old one. It was pretty loose and slick. Rewhipped it as well. Moving down, here's my Niblick. It's made in about 1931 by Stahl and Dean. Also made a separate video on this club too. It's got the standard grooves. Rewhipped it. This club's pretty helpful for around the greens and can usually get about 80 yards off the tee off of it, so it's not too bad. This is my Mashy Niblick. I usually use that for bump and runs. You can see right there it says 95 to 105 yards. Actually, get pretty close to that even with the modern balls. I didn't have to do too much restoration on this. These are the only two match clubs in my set. Well, this is one of the ones where I kept the original grip because it was like doing fine as it was. It's not slipping or anything. Got a pretty good grip on it, so I didn't see a need to change out the grips. Moving down, here's my Mashy. It's made by McGregor. Very common one, but it was pretty cheap at an antique store. It was pretty rusted when I got it, but cleaned up very well. Also kept the original grip on this one because it's doing nicely. Also has a stamped shaft, which I thought was pretty cool. And here's the longest club in my bag. It's a mid-iron made by Aston in the UK. Also made in about 1930, along with the rest of these clubs. I have three spots of whipping there for some added like, strength. I usually do full swings on this one. This one didn't even have a grip when I bought it, so very important to get it re-gripped. So that's pretty much what I use for most rounds. Over here I have two extra clubs. It's a mashy and a mid-iron. Now this one, the problem I have, that it's just very thin. It's like a butter knife, so I've tried hitting it, but just almost impossible for me to get clean contact with it. The ball just usually doesn't go very far. It's also an older one about the 1920s. I re-gripped it too with a different suede leather grip. It's very soft and buttery feeling, but again, I just can't seem to hit it well. This is one of the first hickory clubs I got to Mashy. It's made probably about 1915, so it's the oldest one I've got. Made in Scotland. Actually kind of a collectible club, but I just can't hit it very well because it's been cut down a bit here. It's probably used by like a teenager or someone shorter back in the day. Kept the original grip on it too and restored it. But the head's just not very big on it so I usually thin it when I do it in full swings. It's great around the greens though. Now again here's my driver. Not a hickory shaft but it's made in about the early 1930s. Stamp Bobby Jones right there so it kind of puts a date on it. Doesn't have a face insert or anything. Made by Spalding. It's actually called a one wood. It's what they were called back in the day usually. Got the original grip, but again I just can't seem to hit it very well. The head's pretty small compared to the like a modern driver, so maybe I'll get used to it sometime. But I hope you just enjoyed this quick little video showing what's in my hickory golf bag. And I'll be back again this weekend with another course vlog. Thanks for watching.